How are you guys today? Um, as you can tell, I am <laughs> I'm covered up. I got three layers on. Loud and mumbling. Three layers on. Still in a absolutely freezing freezing house. I've got a heater back there, but it's too loud, so I can't turn it on. And it's messing around my sinuses, so uh, might be a little bit mumbling, but there we go. Right, first things first, crack open the drink. That's it, official stream started. Now, um, the patrons have seen the latest video uh, about Pi Game and <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Um you haven't. Um and it was about how to make a player interact with the with the platform or wall. Now Hello, John here. Thank you for following. Hope you enjoy the stream. Thank you for following. Um, whoever that was, I just heard that it. Oh, I didn't have time. <laughs> right, and so someone suggested that because I'd been um, developing asteroids, and the the reason I was developing asteroids was to show everybody what we could do in pie game as a side project but the whole point of the pie game thing is to learn how to code a game specifically hunchback and try and understand the hello john here thank you for following hope you enjoy the stream wow another one crime team started yes thanks for the follow um whoever that was um so we want to we want to clone hunchback and the whole philosophy of doing it was we would write it in pi game learn the mechanics of how hunchback works and then convert that game to whatever it was when we looked at everybody's different games we would take the best bits of all the games and then try and make a hunchback game in 6502 for the commodore 64. but first you guys don't know how to use Python or code in Python and Pygame. So I've started some videos on Pygame and Python. Um, and now we're getting into the crux of creating a game. Now, the video I've just released for the patrons is all about how your player, Sprite, and they are sprites, can interact with other sprites on the screen and how you can make your player land on a platform and walk along it. So that was the video for this week. And the video for next week is how we can then jump from platform to platform. But I want you guys to, after, once you've watched the videos and um, try to understand it, I wanted you to try as a small bit of homework, and there will be homework, and the homework is to create a block-based game using what you know on the videos that I've already done. So, I thought I would do a stream about... <laughs> Doxter, shut up. <laughs> I'm allowed one stream off topic. Um, so, we're, I'm going to... I've already coded it. I coded it yesterday to make sure that I, I got it working and understood. 68,000. Oh, dear. Next, it'll be ARM. Yeah. Um, and so, in this stream, we are going to go through and develop Breakout. Uh, Arcan Arcanoid, I think, is another name for it, but Breakout. A simple block game 
the ball's going to be a square, the paddle's going to be rectangular. We are going to have <laughs> name in a box. <laughs> I showed you my name in a box and you didn't like it. Um, and <laughs> and at, by the end of the stream, we're going to have a working breakout game. But I want to, what I'm trying, what I want to show you is how easy it is with the limited knowledge and the videos that are currently out there, how you can make a simple game out of blocks that, that we can build on when we get further into it to create proper Pi game games. Now, I don't know if you, uh, I, I've been putting videos about my Asteroids game and I've been putting videos about my Hunchback, my version of Hunchback. And it's not going to be the version we're going to convert. The version I've done is purely for demonstration purposes for you guys to see the potential of what we can do. Now, I've got a caveat. I didn't know how to program in Pygame until we decided we was going to do it. Right? So, I... We decided, what was it, back in um, October, November time, last year. And I started doing the Python game. I started doing the Python videos in June, I think it was. And I started working on the Hunchback one in the, in the same time frame, I think it was, because I was posting videos on my Discord and my progress. So... I am not an expert at Python, I am not an expert at Pygame, but I am, I would say I'm slightly above you guys, yeah, because I've written Asteroids and I've written my version of Hunchback, but that was just for demonstration purposes. So the whole point of this is we are, I am going to code Breakout and I'm not going to copy and paste, I have Admittedly, I'm going to cheat because I've got it here. Look, got it here. It's here, right? And I'm going to use it as a reference purely just to make sure that it works when I finish it. <laughs> um, because, oh, stupid windows. Why do you minimize everything? Um, You've written Hello World. Okay, okay, Andy. Okay. Well, Stacy, Stacy's done Name in a Box. Stacy's done Name in a Box. Um, I mean, I did Name in a Box. Hang on, where's my Name in a Box? Uh, asteroids. I think I put it in there. There we go, Name in a Box. So this is my version of Name in a Box. Uh, let's run it so you can see... So this is my version of name in a box. There you go. My name is Old School Coder, AKA John. This is my entry for name in the box. Simple pie game mechanics, nothing special. Nothing to be worried about, just printing text and drawing a box. Where's the box? There it is. Drawing a box. So, we are not going to be doing a box that's three dimensions. Oh, shut up. <laughs> so, this is, all right, so this is asteroids, yeah? So we're going slightly off topic, but this is what I've done with the limited knowledge that I know, all right? So asteroids, completely controllable. Yeah, simple, simple graphics, all line drawn, 
no sprites. Right? Now, I'm not asking you guys to build, to, to code asteroids. I've been coding asteroids because I've been learning Pygame and I've been trying to learn it fast. And the only way I can learn how to code in a language is to do something in the language. So I've done Hunchback, done Asteroids. Asteroids is not quite finished yet. I've just added sound and stuff like that. But we're going to do other things. <laughs> nope. Nope, 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 nope. So we are going to create Breakout. So this is the Breakout code. So I'm going to run it so you can show you what we're going to do. So here we go. So here it is. Oh, I'm going to have to get over there quick. Oh, missed it. Okay, let's try it again. All right, here we go. Boing. So we're using the mouse to control the paddle. And we've got a square ball bouncing up and down the screen. There's no sound. And there's a little bit of mathematics to work out the angles. Nothing too, look at that, flat. Nothing too special. Just to uh, understand how to write a game in Pygame using what you've seen in the videos which are blocks, block sprites. Shut up. <laughs> this was this was coded in like four, three, three hours, four hours last night. All right, so this is what we're gonna try and do. We're going to do this program and I'm gonna code it line by line, but I'm gonna use my version over there as my notebook and the reason I want to do it line by line is because I want to explain to you guys what we're doing yeah it's all right doing copy and paste and all that all that but then the stream will be over in 10 minutes because I'll just copy and paste there you go done <laughs> that's cheating I'm, I'm allowed to cheat all right but at the end of this at the end of this you guys should be able to write a simple block based game. <laughs> oh, you're not locked down yet, Andy, are you? You're not in South Yorkshire. Uh, we're not either. Anyway, off, off topic again. So we're going to try and code it. Going to try and code it line by line I'm, I'm not I'm gonna try and not copy and paste all right if the stream goes on too too long then may do but I want to try and explain how you can build a game a block game in pie game very easily and quickly so I picked breakout now if you want to pick breakout by all means do your own version if you want to pick other games, um, there were several suggestions in Discord last night and I thought they were all excellent su suggestions. It's boxes. You know, we are working with boxes and, and I've shown you how to do a box in the videos and I've showed you how we can check for boxes colliding. Witchcraft, Warcraft. If you want to do Warcraft, mate, <sighs> <laughs> That's up to you. It's going to take more than a couple of hours to do it, though, isn't it? <laughs> so, let's get started. So, last last week, last week, yeah, I think that's the one I've just released on that's gone public, is the game template. So, the game template video went public last week. I have got loaded up in this project, the game template. So we have some settings in the second file. We have the game template. Yeah, this is the template to run the game. Yeah. So this was the whole thing and then I broke it up, yeah. So we have the main, 
and this the main is basically the thing that runs the program so we're going to go through we're going to create the game we're going to run a start screen but we're not going to do that in breakout because i didn't we're not going to do it we're going to start the game up and off we go yeah and then it just loops around until the game is finished this is the bit that's going to control the game so we've got the initialization where we start the clock set the caption set the screen size say oh, john here thank you for following hope you enjoy the stream thanks for following whoever's followed I, I can hear it in the ear but i can't see it right so and then we've got the setting up all our sprites and the things that we need then we've got the run cycle which will not touch because the run cycle is done that's it it's set up oh well welcome to the stream mate because the most of the guys here are noobs as well i'm a noob at python and pi game but I've got to teach these guys how to how to write a game pretty quickly because of what we're doing. So we've got the update cycle here. We've got the event cycle. So that looks after mouse control, keyboard control. We have the draw cycle. And then we've got some other bits that we use that, that could be used. But we're not going to use it tonight. Because what we're going to do is we're going to do breakout in its rawest form now if you want to do breakout as your homework by all means you've got a bit of a unfair advantage because you would have seen the code i was written so i would i would expect a better game than i've done but if you want to do another type of game i mean i there was um pong there's pong a pinball pinball machine well that's like breakout i suppose hi john here another subscriber stay a while stay forever who subs who's subscribed who subscribed hang on hey andy second month oh cheers mate thank you has it been a month already wow <laughs> how time flies Yeah, well, thanks for thanks for resubscribing, mate. Cool, can't believe it was a month. <laughs> Stay forever, yeah, yeah, yeah. I will be rec recording that, make it make it a bit more menacing. Anyway, so that's the plan for this stream. So let's get. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, Doxter. Oh, thanks for the bits, mate. Yeah, that'll buy me another another cider. Thank you. Keeps the adverts away. <laughs> right, so. Breakout. So, now we have to think how... Um, what we are what are the key components of breakout yeah so if i i don't know if i still got have i still got it no i haven't let's see if i can find the picture again that i used in the uh yeah that'll do that will do that will do right there we go Breakout. So, what are the key components for a bog standard basic game? You know, no bells and whistles. If you want to put bells and whistles in, that's up to you. You know, power ups and all that rubbish, that is up to you. But we are just going to create a bog standard pi um, game, block pi game game called Breakout. So, from that picture, We've got our game space. We have the player, which is the pad at the bottom. We have a ball. 
and we have rows of blocks or walls a wall box and that are basically our ent our, 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 our entities our functions for a better word now I'm not gonna go head over heels in class making and stuff like that we will be making classes but we're not going to be using them as classes because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to code it as I would code it in 6502 so the class is sort of like a, a mod an assembly module and stuff like that where we would have functions to do the code that manages that particular module so don't be too afraid about the classes I'm not going to go mega class heavy you'll see that I don't really use it that much because of the fact that we're trying to we're trying to going to convert this into 6502 so we don't want to do class heavy coding so the things we need we need a ball module we need a player module we need a we got the game module we need a block module so that's four let me just count one two three four yeah so we need four so first things first the most easiest thing most easiest bit of this code <coughs> excuse me the easiest bit of this code is the blocks they don't move those lines and lines of blocks they don't move they just sit there looking pretty going come on ball if you think you're hard enough so that will be the easiest one we're going to create so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create another file called block dot py and the reason why i'm doing this is because i want high phase high phase we want to um separate out all the functions for each of them each of the mod so we'll have a player file we're going to have a ball file we're going to have a settings file like we're doing with the get um, the um, the game template so the first thing we're going to do is we need to cr we need to import pi game as all pi game this is a must because we're going to be using pi game functionalities and we're going to import our settings because that file is going to have all the global settings I'm gonna ignore chat <laughs> right so we need to create a block and the block itself will be a sprite we are going to use the block we're going to use the sprite the Pygame sprite class to define the block so we need to create the class now it's not rocket science don't get scared but we're going to create a class called block and what we need to what do we need to tell python what it is well we need to tell python that we are wanting this to be a sprite all right and i keep forgetting the colon so i do so we are telling python that this block this code this block that we're writing now is a sprite so it's going to add all the sprite functionality that we don't see and we don't care right to this class and then we need to initialize it and we are going to initialize it with all the functions that we need now when you do when you're talking with classes you have to put self all the time doesn't matter put it in all the time then we need we're going to tell it we want to color we want to color the block so that's a parameter we're going to send in and we're going to send in where it is in the game space the x and y of the game space now you've seen my videos where i got the man walking across the screen so you should know about the x y of pi game if you haven't go to my youtube channel look at the hunchback playlist i think it's episode five onwards i think somewhere around there let's have a look my channel 
playlists, Hunchback, where are you? Hunchback, view playlist. So you're looking around about, why are you guys in here? You're not Hunchback, you're Neptune Lander. Anyway, we are looking around here. So episode seven onwards, right? Does the basics of Pi game, you know, flag building, creating a ball, making the ball jump, blah, blah, blah. That's what you need to look for, right? And that will tell you all about the game space X, Y, and all that. So now we've, we've, we're going to tell um, our block what color it's going to be and where it is going to be X and Y. The next thing we need to do, now there's two ways of doing this, is we need to call the sprite in it. Yeah. Because we need to initialize the sprite. Now there's two ways of doing it. There's that, or there's <laughs> uh, yeah, but it'd be a bit boring, though, wouldn't it? Why don't you? Why don't you get the book? Get it so you have to jump over something. Yeah, you know, give it a bit of a challenge. Or well, there's another way of doing it, where you can do Pi Game Sprite. Right, and like this. All right, so there's two ways of doing it. Block tennis, yep. Yeah. Block tennis. So there's two ways of doing it. Um, I done it this way in Hunchback, and I've done it this way. In breakout but there are two ways of doing it but this basically is saying run the init process the initialization process for this for the sprite yeah so it's setting up the sprite now we need to make the block itself we need to make the block so we're going to create an image and like I did in the videos we're going to Create a surface. So we're creating an area that this block is going to take. And in there, we have to tell it how big we want it. So first, how big we want it. So I need to create some settings because all blocks are going to be the same. So block width. Uh, make it 23, block height, 15. So here we can now tell it that we want it settings dot block width, comma, settings dot block settings block height. So that is now creating a space yeah it's, it, that's that's the class name of the of the sprite but the whole thing is like a namespace I think but I didn't want to go into namespaces because people you know, people that are watching this who are probably not coders and stuff like that probably won't understand the concept of namespaces and stuff like that. So that's why we're saying this is the name of the class sprite. Yeah. Now, so we've created now an area for the block. What we need to do now is we need to tell it what color we want it. So the way you can do that. As I've shown in the videos, is you go self image, so that's the image we've just created, fill it with 
the colour that we've passed through in the parameter. So that will then, so if we say it's white, it will make a white square. If we say it's yellow, it'll make a yellow square. If we say it's red, and so on, a red square. Then we need to create the block blocks hitbox. And the hitbox is where, where the, the sprites collide. That this is the, the area of detection that we're going to use. Um, and this is how we know when one sprite has hit another sprite, and it's called a hitbox. But in Pygame, it's called the wreck. So we have to set that up because we have to tell it, right, my wreck is the image that I've just created, and we're going to get, I think it's in there, wreck. There we go. And what that does, that now has created a variable inside the block that says this is my hitbox this is the bit this is me this is me on that screen and then we just tell it where to put it self.x and self.y equals x and y that's it that is the block easy peasy lemon squeezy if you don't believe me, let's put him on the screen, shall we? Let's create a block. So, block on screen equals. Now, we need to import block into here because. Reminds you a little bit about Blitz Basic. Yeah, it is, it's similar. So we need to load, we need to import block into here because game doesn't know anything about block. So we're going to tell it block dot block and then we're going to tell it what colors. So settings dot yellow. So, and we want to put it, uh, no, let's see, what's our screen width? 600 by 400 at the moment. So Let's put it halfway. So we're going to put it at X 300 and Y 200. All right. So let's run this. This should put a yellow block on the screen. Well, it would if I, oh, poo, typo. Forgot the underscore. Have I missed anything else? Any white bits anywhere? Nope. It's a dead giveaway if you have any white bits in the code because it doesn't understand it. Right, so we should have. Oh, poo. What have I. Oh. Forgot the brackets. See? I'm still a noob at this. I don't pr profess to being. What is wrong with you now? What do you mean it's not callable? Oh. This is another thing you fall foul of. Capitalization. Oh, it's stupid. They have got weird capitalizations going on, so be careful. It doesn't work if you get if you. Yeah, case sensitive. There you go. So we've got a blank screen. Why have we got a blank screen? Because we haven't told it to draw the block. So in the draw routine, we need to do, um, well, first we need to add it to the sprites. So we're going to do self.allsprites.add block, 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 block on screen. 
So we're now adding that sprite to a group of sprites. So we've got a, 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 a variable that basically holds all the sprites that we're going to hold on the screen. Now it should show it because we in the draw draw all sprites and it's still not there. What am I doing wrong, John? Well, that's right. And that is right. Where's the draw? Oh, it's an update. It's meant to be a draw. See, I got my template wrong. There we go. But it's in the top corner for some reason and we've not got to figure out why. Why is it in the top corner? Because, what have I, oh, because we told it, we've not actually told it to be in the top, in the place because we have to tell the hitbox where it is. You know, this thing, the hitbox, we have to tell that where it is. There we go. Finally, we're in the right track. So there's our block. And it's one. And that's all it does. It just sits there. That's all this block's going to do. Its life is just to sit there, go bring on to the ball, and the ball to try and hit it. So, let's create the ball then. Same thing again. I'm going to create another file. We're going to import Pygame. We're going to import the settings. And of course I spell it wrong. That's it. Now the ball is going to be slightly different because we need to initialize the ball. And we need to we need to have a routine that works out where it's going. Um, so we've got an update routine. And we need a, a routine to detect that performs the bounce, so either bouncing off the bat, bouncing off the blocks at the top, or bouncing off the wall. And so it's going to be slightly more in-depth, this, this class, because we're going to be working out those three functions. One is to initialize it. Two is to update where it's going. So we're going to be saying, right, you're going in that angle. Where are you going to be the next the next uh, cycle we're running. Then we need to test for whether it's going off the screen so we can bounce it back. And the next, and another test is where we're going to be testing um, what happens when it hits the top, which is the, the bounce. So we'll do the same thing as we've done with the, the block. We're going to create a class called ball. Same thing, pygame dot sprite dot sprite with a capital S remember that I'm not going to fall foul of that one again so we need to initialize it and we send it itself see same then we're going to have to do the super call So that's initializing the sprite bit of it. Right, so how are we gonna do the ball? Well, you've noticed I'm not passing anything in except for the self, because we're not telling the ball where to be. We are going to say that it starts here no matter what. So we need to create um, some settings. Now, the settings that I come up with are ball underscore initial speed because I thought we could have uh, a speed aspect to the ball ball underscore initial direction so initially we tell it you're going to be going at this angle and ball dot underscore width and ball underscore height Right, so let me 
swap to settings so I can see what I've picked on them. Right, so the ball speed I made five. I should have seen it on ten. Oh my god, that was that was hectic. Just double the speed made it mega, mega, mega hard. We're gonna have a initial direction of 200 degrees and we're gonna have it 10 pixels by 10 pixels wide. It's not a, it's not a, uh, it's not a, it's not a circle. We're, we're only talking boxes, blocks. This game, it, this game is all about creating a game just using a block, a square, rectangle, or rectangle. And the only reason I'm doing that is because my videos that I've got on my YouTube channel, we're only talking about a block. So I'm trying to reinforce what I've done in the videos. So we're not talking circles, not talking polygons, not talking any other shape. We are just creating a game out of blocks to make it nice and easy. Yeah, make it nice and easy. So we now need to initialize our ball. So the first thing we're going to do, self.speed. So this is the speed of the ball, which is settings dot ball speed so this is so now self dot speed hit detection will be a bit off no it won't because the we're using the default hitbox yeah so it, the box is the box the hitbox yeah so it's not going to be a bit off all right if we was use if we like in i did in my asteroids where it's all jagged edges yeah, the hitbox was a little bit off because I used the circle version of the hitbox, not the... But for this, we are using a box and the hitbox is a box. So the edge of the box will be the edge of the hitbox. So we're going to have pi almost pixel perfect collisions going on. So we are going to tell it that it has an X. So we're starting it at 0.0, .0 on the X. So that's going to be the top corner set the y to be 180 and the reason i've set y to be 180 which is fit further down the screen is because we're going to be putting the blocks up and we need the ball low enough down not to hit the blocks then we're gonna we want a direction variable so we'll initialize it to our direct ball direction and set the width so self dot height and the reason i've made these ooh not no 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 not that not that and the reason i've made these um parameter um variables is because if we if you if you guys decide that you want to do let's say do um, defend uh, not defender breakout but you want to add difficulties you could make the ball big for easy and really really teeny tiny for hard you could have a different speed so you could make the ball go really really fast which is impossible to play believe me I've tried and also you could have different initialization directions. So if you want to make it really hard, you could make it really fast and at such a shallow angle that you know, you're chasing it all around. So the, init the, the settings is just an initialization stage, but the way I'm doing it here allows you, if you want to do this, you could change, if you have levels, you could change the, the mechanics of how the game will progress. So we need to do what we did with the block. So we need to create a surface that is going to represent our ball. So in self.image equals uh, pygame dot surface. This time spell it with a capital. And then we're going to tell it where where the size of so width height. So there we go. We now have created a surface that is the ball now this surf like say is just a little thing and then we tell it where to plonk it on the screen so when we 
we are going to the ball's going to be white so self dot image dot fill with settings dot white so we're going to make the ball white we're not going to make anything else and then we need to set up its hitbox so pi game self dot image dot get rec Is the is the template on GitHub? No, not yet. I don't think I need to put it up there. I'll put it up there after this year. And also, I'll fix the the problem with it. I thought I got all the bugs out of it. Right. So there we go. We have initialized the ball. So like we've done with the block, that's all we did. So we could make. We could make our game instantiate a ball. So we'll do that. Yeah, I'll put it on GitHub, mate. So let's call this ball. And, oh, we need to import ball. It's a square ball. <laughs> yes, it's a square ball. Right, so why is caps lock on? Ball dot ball. We're not. We don't pass anything into it, and we're going to put ball on the screen. Right, ball on screen. There. Ooh, undo. So we're going to add it to the sprite group. So when we run this, we should get a ball in halfway down on the edge of the screen. So let's see if I've done it right. And of course I haven't. And why is it not? Oh, that's because I've not set the rec. That's because I've not set the hitbox. This is only temporary. This is only so I could show you it going on the screen. Because that code's not there. There you go. So that's where our ball, that's the initialization point of our ball. All right. So I'm going to take that out because they don't get set there. Now, we need an update routine. And this routine is now is going to work out where the ball's going to be, where the ball's going to go, right? So if it's got so initial state is, it's going at five pixels, five pixels per cycle, I suppose. Hang on, is it? Yeah, five pixels a cycle. Now, I wonder if it's quick. And it's going in a 200 degree angle. So, so it's, I think it goes that way around. 200 degrees is that. So, what we need to do is we need to um, pi, Python and We haven't got there yet. We haven't got there yet. You're, you, you, you're jumping ahead. At the moment, we're trying to create the, the things that are going to be used. So block, ball, player. Yeah. And then 
the game mechanics get put into the game module. So yes, you're right. We haven't created a a list of blocks yet because we're not that we're not there. All we're doing is we're just creating the key components of the game. Yeah. So uh, and that's what that's where this bit is coming in. Yeah. So you you don't you don't try and build the game without the bits that are going to make the game work. So we need to build the bits. So it's like building the house. Foundations first, then build the house on the foundations. So here with the ball, in the update, we're going to now work out where the ball's going to go in the next game cycle. All right. And the way we do that is we know its angle, we know its speed, and we know where it is right now, the X and Y. Yeah. Now, computers don't like degrees. Do not like degrees. They hate the degrees. They work in this thing called radians, which I think is two pi, two times pi, I think. Don't know why. Why would you work in radians? But there we go. So the first thing we need to do is we need to work out what our direction is in radians. So direction radians equals and luckily science <laughs> yeah Andy science now luckily Python makes this a little bit easier see if you was in 6502 yes I suppose if you was in 6502 you've got to work this out yourself but there's a module in Python called math and it's a wonderful module it does everything maths do and there's a function called math dot radians there you go open bracket and you give it what your degree is so self dot direction so set our direction is in degrees, yeah? So we are converting our direction into radians that we can use in this function. Now, the next thing we have to do is we have to work out where the ball's gonna go next, yeah? And this is trigonometry. Everybody know what trigonometry is? It took me a while to figure it out because I had to go back. I went back to Key Stage 4. I was looking in Key Stage 4 math books on the on the web to figure it out. <laughs> How sad is that? I, I could have gone, I could have, I should have rang my son up and said, how do you do trigonometry, mate? <laughs> hey, oh, who's posting dirty links? Hey, get closer. Still works. Still works. You know, I'm gonna get this muted out of here, you know. Stacey, you're showing our age up. Come on. That's going to get muted. I'm telling you, that's going to get muted in Twitch. <laughs> right. So. Trigonometry. Here we go. Now, I had to look it up. So this is it, right? So self dot x is itself to x plus the speed self dot speed times by math dot sign open bracket our direction in radians I am not going to explain that formula all right 
<laughs> my granddad liked that song. <laughs> How did I? <laughs> right, self dot white is the opposite. So self dot speed times by math. Guess what this was going to be? The cosine of the direction in radians. Ah oh, dot explaining. Trigger trigger omery, right? No. Oh, it's all about right angle triangles and stuff like that. The asterisk, huh? What asterisk? Oh, you mean this one? It's times by multiply. Yeah, multiply. So now we've worked out the new position of the ball. Yeah, so we have to then tell the hitbox where it is. Yeah, rec dot y equals self dot y. So that's now telling our hitbox where it is. Multiply is too hard for. <laughs> hmm. I'm not going to explain that. I'm not going to explain that. I, like I said, I went online to find out about the trigonometry and I had to go back to key stage four mathematics in the UK. I found some key stage four mathematic tutorials on how to work out distance on a hypotenuse triangle. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm not going to explain it. No. <laughs> Yep. 3D. So you're on about this. Aquafin, you're on about this bit and this bit. Yeah? Well, that's, that's effectively saying this. It's basically saying X equals X plus... Uh, yeah? And this one is basically saying y equal, uh, equals what y minus blah. Yes, but it this I mean JavaScript does it. C sharp does it. VB.net does it. It's all the it's all the rage now, this shorthand code. It's all the rage. <laughs> <Time yet. laughs> all right so so we've told the ball where well we've told the hitbox of the ball where it needs to go so we need to we need we also need to do some more other tests as well because if we don't do any tests the ball will literally just fall just carry on <laughs> Aquafin, he gets everywhere. <laughs> so what we need to do is we need to um, we need to um, try and explain this. Right? Um, how am I going to explain this? Um, have I got um, whoever's pinging me on Discord? I'm ignoring you. Right, so let's use a bit of paper, right? So here's our game space. Straight as an arrow they are. So our ball here, 
Our circle ball is it? Oh, I can't draw for toffee. Um, so, one thing we need to do is we need to make sure that when it hits the top, it bounces back. Yeah? If it hits the side, oh, look at the state of these arrows, it bounces back. If it hits that side, it bounces back. But if it goes down, we don't care because that means game over, yeah? So we need to work, we need to work out uh, these points. We need to test for point, that point there, that point there, that point there. All right? So we need to put some rules in here that's going to detect and then what we're going to do about that. So the, the most obvious one is the top of the screen. So we're saying if self.y, which is the up and down axis, is less than or equal to zero, then, then what we're going to do, we're going to make it bounce, self.bounce. All right, and what we're going to do then? What we're going to do? Um, and then we put the ball down one because if it's on zero, with the A. Oh dear. Anyway, so that's testing now for the top of the screen, and we're going to do we're going to perform a function called bounce, which is going to basically turn the angle, and and we've moved it down one pixel, so it's not on the zero, so we don't have we don't accidentally fire that routine again. So we need to test for the the left side. So if self dot x um, is less than or equal to zero, so we're testing for the side. We then are, it's not quite a bounce, is it? Because the bounce is going to doing the vertical. We then need to, oh, yeah. Let's see if I can try and explain this. Uh, do I, do I, file new. Let's do lines, let's do lines, right. To test the side, so that's our side wall, yeah? So our ball hits the side wall. Oh, look at this, eh? I wish there were arrows, cool. At a certain angle, yeah? So we have to work out what that angle is. So if we say that our angle so if I draw a line like that, oh, this is getting technical, this is. Then this is our angle into the wall, yeah? Now, we need it to bounce that way off. So we need to make it bounce this way according to this line, yeah? So we need, oops, line, 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 line. Line, line, line. We need to make it do that, but there. So, but I'm using the green line as our anchor point. So we need to work, work out, pen, pen, paper, that angle there. And it's pretty, pretty easy because what it is, is let's say that's 30. Let's say that's 30. The equation, equation is 360. Oh dear, I'm terrible with my mouse. Minus the angle that we're going into it, which is 30. Yeah. So that would be 330. That is our reflection angle. That's our reflection angle. So if this is 30, this from there is 
330 degrees round like so. Yes, I know that was too easy. I'm working in angles. That's what we would do if we was going in, if we converted it into 6502, yeah? All right. Right, so, so what we need to do here is we need to work out the new angle. So self dot direction equals 360 minus self dot direction and we'll put this to confuse everybody sorted and then we do self dot x equals one to take it off the take it off the border I need a graphics tablet yeah yeah hmm I may get one. I'm waiting for the obvious question. Come on then. Who's going to be first? Who's going to be first? Go on then. What's the obvious question? No? No takers? <laughs> Is it time for a coffee? <laughs> You're not going to ask about it. All right, then. Okay, then we won't talk about it. Right, I'll talk about it just in case for the people. This, right, is if you imagine divide. So we're saying... Three th uh, 360 minus the direction, let's say 30, which it equals 330, divided by 360, yeah? But it that would give us um, a remainder value. And what that, that does is the percentage sign does the divide, but it only returns the remainder. So in, it's making sure we don't have an angle more than 360 yeah it's very you know it's a it's a cheating way of making sh making sure you're within your range that you want yeah without having to do some complex if statements all right right so we do the same thing on the other side so are we greater than oops come on screen width minus self dot width so now we're testing on the right hand side so now <laughs> yeah, okay so if the x is it's come to the edge of the screen minus its width. Remember, we're talking x, y, which is the... So if you remember, on our, on our um, ball, I can't be bothered to fire up the... That's the x, y point. So if we're testing for coming off the edge of the screen, we need to test for the there, which is x, y plus your width of the ball, yeah? So we're doing that, and then it's exactly the same thing again. Exactly the same thing again. And then the only difference now is the x value equals that, that, minus 1. So we bring it in. We bring it in 1, right? So now that's test. So we've tested for the top. We've tested for the sidewalls. Yep. Yeah. And 
we need to now test for the bottom. So if self dot y is greater than the settings dot screen height, then we're going to return true else return false. So basically, if we when we were going to return true when the ball has gone bit be off the screen down. If it's not gone off the screen down, we're going to return false. And that is our um, test for end of game, yeah? When we when in the game loop, in the game loop. So we'll be testing that in the game loop. So that is the ball. So we are missing something, which is this, the bounce function. So we need to write the bounce function. Now this is the bounce function for top and bottom. So it's doing the bounce from top and bottom. And it's almost identically the same as this almost but it's got a subtle difference yeah speaking of difference is we need to invert the direction so instead of doing from that way to that way we need to do that way to oh whatever that way <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Here we go. Two pens. So if the ball's going that way up, we need it to work that way down, that way down, which is slightly different um, mathematics because it's actually 180. So we, we want to do 180. Yeah. So we're inverting it. And the difference is where we add variation to the bounce. Yeah. <laughs> Darts. <laughs> so self dot direction. So this is adding variation to the bounce. So basically, we can say that um, as up here, we're putting zero in. So we're saying when it hits the top, it's going to do an exact. It's going to bounce at an exact mirror angle back down. Yeah. But when we talk in when it hits the paddle, when it hits the paddle, we want to be able to vary the angle that it comes off. Yeah. And that's what diff is. It allows you to modify the angle of the bounce of the the um, the bat. But from doing it at the top, it's always zero because we want it mirroring coming back down. That is the ball that's the code for the ball so it's pretty simple really we've got an update routine that works out where it's going to go next and we've got a bounce routine that works the bounce from top and bottom but we have a deflection routine here i mean we could potentially write like you know deflection here if we wanted to because it's exactly the same code so return this yeah so we're returning that and then here we would say it equals self dot deflection and I can't spell I've just noticed deflection yeah and so we could do it here as well So if you ever wanted to change the mathematics, we just change it in one place. So that is done. Next, we need to create this player, 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 player sprite. So starting again. So player. Import the standard pi game. Import settings. 
class layer and it's of pi game dot sprite dot capital sprite and then def underscore underscore init right so in this we are just sending itself <laughs> dear Stacy <laughs> Are you are you trying are you trying to be the shimmer joke bot? During the Cold War, there was a lot of deflections. <laughs> oh dear! Right, so we need to initialize our sprite. There is even some breakouts. Yeah, okay. <laughs> right, so we need to initialize the player sprite. So we're not going to have any settings for this. So self dot width, because it's always it's always going to be the same width. But like I say, in leveling you could make the bat the smaller. You know the pad smaller. So harder difficulties have a smaller pad. So self dot height. Equals what have I put it at? Oh, 15. And we need to do the same thing, we need to create the image surface. So self.image equals pi game dot capital S surface open bracket and we are putting self dot width comma self dot height. <laughs> yep, but it doesn't work when you're doing uh, hardness. Right, oh no, that's just opened myself up for some pain that has. Right, so we're going to fill this with what we're going to fill this. So if we've got a white ball, coloured blocks, the paddle can be yellow. Let's do yellow. So we're making the paddle yellow and then we need the hitbox set up. So that's setting up the hitbox and then we need to tell it where it's going to be. So self.rec.x equals zero. So we're going to start it at the very edge self dot y oh, rec dot y equals and this is going to be at the bottom of the screen so settings dot screen height minus self dot height so that will put the paddle at the bottom of the screen right now we need to do an update we need to be able to up we need to update the paddle, so we need to create an update function, and we are saying that the position of the paddle is going to be in line with the position of the mouse on the x-axis. Yeah, so we're going to control this using the mouse. So we need to know where the position of the mouses and then apply that to the paddle and the way to do that is we'll create a variable called position and it's pi game dot obviously mouse dot get position ooh go back get position so that is getting the position That's the plan phase. Uh, we are creating a very simple game and I've already done it 
because I'm using them as my crib notes. But it's a very simple game. Um, but the whole point of this is to be able to show, to show people that with the videos that I've done already, you should be able to create a block-based game very easily. And this is the whole point of this. Yeah, so the whole that's the whole point of this stream. Someone asked me, how do I create a game from where... Because they thought I was creating the... They thought I was going to ask to create the Asteroids game, and it's not. Eventually, we will get there. We will get there. But I want you guys to learn how to program in Python and, and Pygame. So I thought, if I do a stream to show you that you can create a game using blocks, just using blocks, nothing special, using blocks... Just the sprite with the hitbox and a block, yeah? That you can then do that with what I've done in the video so far. And that's what this this stream is all about. Because you will get homework. And the homework will be, of course, make me a block-based pie game. Now, some people have got ideas that I know about, the games they want to do, because I was talking about it yesterday on Discord. And... Um, and they are pretty and one of them I'm really really keen to see it get done and and it's just to help you understand how Pi Pi game works that's the whole point of this so I'm showing you with not a lot of code we can build a game a, you know and, a, and it's block based no special graphics no sounds or anything like that it's just a game so we'll carry on. So we need to now, now we've got the position of the mouse, we need to apply it to the hitbox of the player. Yeah. So we set the X to where my mouse position is. Yeah. Now, why is that complaining? Why is that complaining? Because I didn't pass self in. That's why it's complaining. There we go. So the next thing is we need to make sure that our pad doesn't go off the off the play surface, yeah? So it doesn't go off the play surface. So we need to test if self.rec.x. So we're testing where the x is. If it's greater than settings dot screen width minus self dot width and we need to set it, yeah? And I just copy this, paste it there. So that is equal to that screen width minus the width. And that's it, that stops us going off that side, right? Can't go off the other side, it's impossible, but it stops us going off that side. And that is the player clap. That's the player class. Done. Sorted. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Right. So, let's do one thing at a time. So I'm going to take out that because that was just testing. So let's add the player class. Um, the player to the game. And I want to change my settings as well. Because I think I've got the screen bigger as well. Hang on. Yeah, 8 by 6. So 800 by 600. Just so it works. Right, so now we are starting to write the game. All right? So we are going to add the player sprite. So that's what we need to do. So we need to add the player sprite. We need to add the ball sprite. We need to add the block sprites. But first, let's do the player sprite. So, self dot player. So that's saying self means the game now. Yeah. Equals, and we need to import the player because we haven't done it yet. Because game won't understand what player is. Player dot player. Right. So that's the player created. Easy. Now we need to add him. Add the player to the all sprites. 
because we need to be able to get in there. We need to be able to do collision detection and stuff like that. Yeah, so we're adding the player sprite into the group of sprites we're going to be playing with. So if we run this now, so if I go to main, if we run this now, we should have the player sprite, the player sprite at the bottom of the screen. And we don't. Now why don't we? Why don't we? Because I haven't done the draw. Yeah. Because I haven't done the draw, I don't think. But I have. Oh. Hang on. Have I missed? A draw routine? No, not Mr. Draw routine. Miss the draw routine. That should draw the player on the screen. Oh, what a Wally. Wally, I'm adding all sprites. Player. There we go. Player. Adding all the sprites. There's nothing in it. Right, we should have the player at the bottom of the screen now. Oh, here we go. Tuple. The object was not callable. Hang on about. Get position, because that would be X and Y. Self dot rec dot X equals position. Ugh. This is something else I get a fall over. Arrays are square brackets, not Oh. Yeah, I fall over that all the time, all the time. There we go, there's our player sprite at the bottom and he follows the mouse. See? Because we, if you notice, the block will always follow the first bit of the mouse, always the, sorry, the first bit of the block always follows the mouse. It's not halfway. And look, it stopped there. And here, we stop it there. Yeah? So, our player sprite is up and running. Alright? So, we need to now start adding the other components of the game. So, um, we need a how can I do this we need to we need a ball we need a ball group so we're going to create another sprite group And the reason for this is if you we might have more than one ball. So we could have two balls on the screen at the same time. Or three. Four. So we create the group. So we put all the balls in the group. So let's create, we're just going to create one ball for the moment. So self dot ball equal ball dot ball 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 dot ball. Thank you. And then we need to add it to the all sprites.
because that is our container for all things Sprite so ball and we need to add it to the ball Sprite balls container because this is just going to hold all the balls that's in the game and you'll see why we're going to be doing this now this is in the next video that's coming out next week so pay attention boys and girls because this will be in next week's video where we're doing uh, group collection uh, group collisions so we've created the ball now if I run this Oh, would help if I was on the right program to run. Here we go. Here we go. One ball. And it fell through the player sprite. And the reason for that is because we haven't put the collision detection in yet. But that's just showing that the ball on its settings is just falling straight through. Okay, Stacey. Take care, mate. I'll talk to you soon. So now, so we've got the ball on the screen. Ha! Late to the party again, mate. So now we've got the player sprite on the screen. We've now got the ball on the screen. Um, now we're going to put the walls, the blocks of walls on. All right. So we need to create another sprite group. Called blocks. And now we're going to create our walls. Yeah. So we have um, we have to specify some parameters. So we need to do this in the game initialization. So these are specific to this game, not the template, but specific to this game. So we're saying we are going to have on um, self dot uh, block count so we're gonna have 32 on a row I think it is yep 32 on a row we are gonna say we're gonna have five rows and the top of the wall is going to be eight characters down so here we can now start adding our blocks into the game so simple four next loops so here we go so four row in range and self dot number of rows so we've set self dot number of rows to be five. So it's saying for row in the range zero to five. So we should end up with six rows, I think, or uh, or five. It may do one minus what we asked for. The next one is for column. For column, basically this is the block on the row. Uh, in range. And we do the same thing again, but this time it's uh, da, 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 zero to self dot uh, block count. Right now we now start creating our blocks. So block one equals block dot block. So we're going to make settings dot this one. We're going to, we're going to make them 
Now, I made the demo blue, so we'll make them uh, red. And we are going to go column. So we're going to take the column value times by, so this is the X position, all right? Times by the um, settings dot block width plus two. And the reason we're putting plus two, that's, that's gonna give us a two pixel gap between all the blocks. Yep, plus one, comma, self dot top. So that's saying that the top of self, so the Y is this top, yep. So now we've created our block, so we need to add it to blocks. We need to add it to the blocks um, sprite group. And then we need to add it to the all sprites group. Add. No one's asked the obvious question yet. Why am I adding it to the All Sprites group? Well, the All Sprites group is basically runs all the updates and runs up and, and does the drawing. That's the only reason the All Sprites group there. It makes life easier for when you're coding it. So that's so we've done that. So we're doing the next values. So once we've done the columns, so we need to update the top plus equals uh, settings dot block height plus two so that makes the new top be the height of the block plus two pixels and then that should create us that should be it that should now create us a block wall so let's run it and find out there we go so five blocks so that's a fly block oh, it's not complicated if you if you watch the rerun it won't be complicated yeah won't be complicated and also um, if you watch a couple of my videos you'll see that um, we're just using what's on those videos to work it out so that's now set up the game we've got our we've got our blocks got our blocks across the top of the screen we have the ball going down yes and um, we have the ball going down yeah if you look under old school coder in YouTube you'll see my videos um, and we've got our player pad at the bottom yeah so we've got all the elements in place so now we just need to do all the update mechanics now the update mechanics is am I hitting a block Am I hitting the pad? Yeah. I'm just checking that they're the only two things. App Dr. Goggles. Um, yeah. So basically, we are, we're now performing the update. So we're basically doing the mechanics of the game. So, we need to um, test for the ball hitting the block. And when the block is hit, it gets rid of it. And we need to test that the ball's hitting the pad and then to rebound off the pad. But we're gonna put a, um, a, a thing in there that allows us to change the angle off the pad, yeah? So, um, first things first. In the update, so we're talking the update now. Yeah, this is the the update part of the program is where we're doing all the updates. So we need to tell it to update the player. Yeah, just for just to make sure the player's updated. We also need to update the ball. Yeah, so we're saying. And because we've got a variable called playing, so when playing becomes false, it ends the game. 
we can now say self.plane is not, so it's the opposite of the answer that comes out of ball.update. Because we set it to true when it falls off the screen. So if it's, you know, if it's falling off the screen, we want it to be false for playing. You know, we're not playing anymore. I hope I've explained that right. Yeah. And so self dot self dot running equals self dot playing. So that so self dot running is the is the game running and self dot playing is the game are we playing inside the game. So we have two cycles going off. We've got the game cycle and we've got the playing cycle. And the, the game cycle allows you to do leveling, um, it allows you to do lives and all that. There's a game cycle just looks after that game at that moment in time. So we've updated the player and we've updated the ball. So now we need to start testing, has the ball collided with the player? So that's our first test. Has the ball collided with the player? And the way we do this is we use one of the pi game functions for sprites, right? So it's oh, someone's commented on my YouTube channel. Um, so oh, slightly got me um, disappear then. Go away. Go away. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Pi game dot sprite dot. Now this is it. It's called sprite collide, right? So this is a function that allows us to test if a sprite has collided with another sprite. So we're saying we want to test that the player player sprite, so self dot player, has hit self dot balls. So we're not testing a ball, we're testing the group of balls because we want to be able to say if that ball's hit or that ball's hit, but we don't want to test each and every one of them. We want to test a lot and that's what we can do. And then the most important thing on the end is false. Now that false says if my player sprite has hit a ball sprite, do I want to kill the ball sprite? And the answer to that question is no. We don't want the ball sprite to be erased. We want to keep it. So if we're in the if statement now, that means we've had a sprite collision between the player and a ball. Now, at the moment, we've only got the one ball, got the one ball on the screen, but we could have many balls. So it's saying we've had a collision between the player and a ball. We don't know which one yet, but we, we've had a collision. So we want to now, um, no, we won't do that yet. We'll do that in a minute. So we're going to just do a standard reflection bounce back yeah we're not going to do any variation we're just going to do a reflection bounce back so we're going to say self dot ball dot rec so the hitbox dot the y value is equal to settings screen height screen height minus self dot player dot height uh, rec height minus self dot ball dot rec dot height. And we're going to minus one off it because we want to bring it up. So basically what's happening is, is we've collided, we've hit the player pad we've clad with it the player pad but if we just 
left it there, it would always hit. Yeah. So what we've done is we've lifted it up one pixel so it's no longer colliding with the two hitboxes. That's what the minus one is. Yeah. And then we're going to do self. We're going to tell the ball to bounce. Self dot ball dot bounce. But we're going to tell it just do a normal reflection bounce. Yeah. So let's see if it does it. So hopefully I'm going to be quick enough and catch it. Well, no, not quick enough. Do it again. Right, let's put the mouse somewhere over here. So we can try it. There we go. Oh, too fast. Too fast, too fast, too fast. Do it again. We'll have to slow it down, I think. There we go. Hey, we got it to bounce. And so it's bouncing off the ceiling at the moment because we've not tested for the, the blocks yet. All right. So, um, now, so we're just doing the normal reflection uh, bounce off the thing. We could add a difference mechanic to it, but we're not going to do that just yet. We'll do it in a bit. We're going to try now and do the test for the blocks. Yeah. So the test for the blocks is um, exactly the same as Yeah, it's Pygame is a gaming extension for Python. It's very, very clever once you understand how all the all the mechanics work of it. Right, so now we've we've tested for bouncing off the pad, even though it's a little bit quick. It's very quick. Let me maybe it's maybe Hmm. We'll have to might have to change the speed. Let's slow it down, shall we? Let's make it three. See if that slows it down a bit. Here we go. It's better. Oh, that's better. That's a more pleasant pace. Might be a bit too slow now. Let's, uh, let's knock it up a notch or see if it becomes a bit of a challenge now. Oh, I might knock it back to five. Might knock it back to five. I like, I like having a challenge. Just got to make sure the mouse is not wandering over there. It's wandering here. Come on, wandering here. There we go. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. There we go. Right. So now we need to do the block detection because that's the whole point of the game is to knock the blocks out. So we're going to basically do the same as what we did with the player, but in reverse. Yeah. So we're going to test for a block. And if there's a block, do a reflection off, but get rid of the block. So the way to do that is we do the same thing, but this time we're gonna we 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 want to know what blocks are uh, being collided with. So we create another variable called dead block or something like that. Dead block. So this is the block that we are colliding with, and it's exactly the same. So it's p pi game dot sprite dot collide. Oh, Sprite Collide, isn't it? Sprite Collide. And now we are testing whether the ball, whether the ball is colliding with anything in the blocks. And this time, 
instead of being false like we did before we're saying true so this time we're saying when the ball is collided with any one of those blocks we want that blocks to be termed killed to go deleted but what we're doing is we're not deleting it we're putting it in this variable here yeah so this is our dead block the one that's just been removed I'm using the Microsoft Python one the, the in fact it's the new one they've just brought out a new one um, they've just brought out a new one I think it's this one yeah this one this is the preview so this is the extension I've got active at the moment so this is the new uh, Python Visual, Stu Visual Studio Code extension from Microsoft so that's what I'm using right so back onto this so we now know what block has been killed so we are now going to go and say um, if so we need to test len open bracket dead blocks yeah and we're going to say are we greater than zero so that's basically saying um, did we get a block did we get a block and if we did get a block that means that the a block was killed we want to then tell the ball to bounce off that that block yeah and then that's the new thing about this extension you get all the help for it this is the really good thing about this new extension if you hover over a, uh, a function you get the help for it look yeah and then we get the ball to bounce and then we what we need to do is we need to Hello, sit John here. someone's hosting my stream oh next thing they'll be nicking my code <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for hosting whoever that was. <laughs> right. So what we need to do now is we need to then check how many blocks we've got left. So if len self dot blocks so this is our group of blocks yeah is equal to zero that means we've got none that means they have gone then we're gonna say playing equals false and self dot running equals false so basically end of game right we're not gonna put any you've won this we're not we're not do, we're not talking about that yet so we're just saying when you've run out of blocks that's the game that's the game finished and that is essentially except for the variation variation of the uh, the pad that is essentially it so we should have a playable game right fingers crossed everybody here we go get my mouse in the right place here we go right destroy a block destroy a block destroy a block here we go cool ah! <laughs> let's run that again I am rubbish rubbish at game playing right here we go oh no that was close there we go so this is breakout in its simplest form a block based game 
using the sprite mechanics in Pygame. A simple block based game. Now, the other thing that I did in my demo was I added a deflection. When, um, when the ball, when the ball hits the bat, I have it varying the um, deflection um, rebound, right? And we can work that out here. We can work that out here now what i what i was trying to do was i was trying to say the further away the the further away let's try and visualize it so there's there's the player bat so if it come in to the middle yeah it would be a, a pure reflection bounce but as it came closer to this side, the angle would narrow, yeah? But the further away, the angle would get shallower and reflect off at a different ang uh, different type of angle. And that's what I was trying to do. But if you notice when I played my demo game, we had the we had the point where it was sitting on the back. Now, someone can try and um, help me work this out, then all that's all good but what I was trying to do was say the difference is equal to um, let's have a drink um, so we want to say the player X so the X, so this is where I was trying to work it out. And I think I got the, I think I got it sort of right, but it's not perfect, but I'll put in what I've got sort, which is self dot play it dot hitbox X point plus the player dot width divided by two, right? So it's it's saying that the the let's get it see if i can do it right far new so it's saying that this is the player right and our point where we put the player on the screen is this point now we want to know how far away from that point we are so that's where the width divided by two comes into it. And so we add it to the X value, which should give us that point, yeah? And then what I do then is I then minus the same thing with the ball. So ball dot rec dot X plus uh, self dot ball dot width divided by two and in fact let's make them integer divides so what I tried to do what I tried to work out was when the ball comes in so if this is the ball uh, let's get a different color so when the ball hits there, yeah, that's the X point. We know the width, so that is the point there. And what I was trying to say was it's that point minus that point, which would give us a deflection, a negative deflection, yeah, because it would be, let's say if that was... Far, let's say if that was 5, that was 10, and that was 15, and it hit us at 12. So 5, uh, we know that this is um, 10 wide because it goes to 15. So 5 
plus 10 divided by 2 is 5, so that's 10. And then minus 12 minus 1, so that's 11. So that gives us a minus 1 deflection. So if it was on this side, we'd get a positive number. So that's basically increasing and decreasing the angle. Yeah? That is the, the concept of it. So um, if we hit this side, it would be more of an angle. And if this side, the angle would steepen upwards. That is the philosophy. So then we just put it in there and say that that's our difference. Yeah. So let's see if we can get the ball varying in its deflection now when it hits me the pad so here we go get the arrow in right place doink right should be able to see there we go flattened it out Whoa. and that was the bug there is a point where you can just completely lose the the bounce um so the maths is not am i using a color theme in vs there on your code no i'm just using the standard python color color scheme right so anyway, see what i mean it's, it, there is a point where it just kills the angle so the maths for the difference needs to be worked out a bit better but there we go i've got it up so we've got a variation of the angle and I did get it bang on straight I think it was somewhere Ooh, oomph. stop 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 there we go oh lovely oh so that is a simple 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 game now, that was as far as I w was going to go in this stream, but it means that you can do far more on this. You know, we could start recording the hits on the blocks and add points to them and start having a scoring system. Um, we could have, you could have power-ups in there, so we'd create another class for power-ups that would allow us to have more than one ball or slow the ball down so those sort of things or speed the balls up and it allows you to then make the game more addictive still using block uh, still using square blocks you know we're not talking any sort of graphics or anything like that just using square blocks and what I want you guys, to, what I want you guys to do, if you're gonna do it, right, is and, and I, this will be the test to find out how many people want to be involved in the development of Hunchback. I want you guys to write a block-based Python Pi game game program. No, don't worry about graphics. Don't worry about anything like that. We're just talking rectangles and squares. But to build and develop a game of rectangles and squares. Like I've done here with Breakout. But for you guys to create... If you want to do Breakout, by all means do Breakout. There's the code. You've seen me write it. So it's 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 there's not a lot there. And there's plenty of other block-based games out there that wouldn't need a lot of code to make it a playable game. And then we can then start tweaking it. We can start doing levels, power-ups, scoring, and all that. Yeah, just like I did with Asteroids when I wrote when I'm because I'm still writing it because I've just added sound to it, um, and it will allow you to learn python and pi game ready for when we do dive into hunchback um so we've been going how long now how long we've we been going wow two hours 
So <laughs> it's took me it's took me less time to write it with people watching me. Hello, hello. Um, it took me less time to write it with people watching me than it did last night when I was doing it on my own. But then I was trying to I was trying to work out all the angles and everything. So homework. Write yourself a block based pie game written in uh, block based game written in pie game <laughs> so i want to know out of the people that are watching who's up for that who's who's up for that challenge there's no time limit yeah because the next video i release to the patrons will be the um jumping where we can jump Six five oh two. I'll, I'll do my best. It's it's a bit of fun. Well, it's it's this. Uh, Omg, Buster! It's it's not adva This is not advanced. If you go and watch, hang on. Have I still got my playlist up? Yes, I have. Right, I've got a playlist that says Hunchback. Yeah. If you watch from episode seven right because all the other episodes before that are setting up the development environment if you watch from episode seven i go through like here getting started with python then this one is we make a ball move around the screen this one we make it jump this one we add a background so we can have the ball moving around in the background then we make the ball a man if you watch these videos yeah yeah all the ones and with this stream, you should be able to make yourself a, to forget about graphics, but a block style game. Now, there's plenty of games out there. I mean, my other half went and said, what about Space Invaders? Yeah, Space Invaders can be a block based game. We just have blocks as the Space Invaders. We have a block um, shooter. We have blocks as shields. Use your, use your imagination a little bit. And, you know, um, I've, I've, I know some people are doing specific games. Yes, block based. We are, we are just like, a, excuse me, just like I've just done here in Breakout, everything is a block. It's a rectangle. Ooh, got to be in main, Hunter. That's all right, mate. See, look, everything is a... Oh, look at the state. Oh, that's a good one. Everything is just... <laughs> I'm going to lose this. I can see... <laughs> right. Everything is a block. It's a, it's a rectangle... Got to be quicker than that. Got to be quicker than that. Oh, come on, John. I'm just rubbish. I've written this game, a very simple game, and I can't play it. No! Right, I need to have my mouse here. Right. Mouse here. There we go. Oh, absolutely rubbish. Absolutely rubbish. Put my mouse there. Got you. Here we go. Here we go. Straighten up, straighten up, straighten up, straighten up, straighten up, straighten up. Oh, you little. Oh, no. Keep following. Ah. See, this is just blocks. No fancy graphics, no nothing. It's just blocks. <laughs> I need to make the bat double width. Okay, let's make the bat double width. Uh, bat. Bat, bat, black, bat. So we're going to the player. Um, it's 75, so we'll double it, make it 150. All right, let's try it. Let's <laughs> see if I'm any better. <laughs> 
Right, mouse. Here we go. Here we go. Thank you for following. Hope you enjoy the stream. Thank you for. Thank you very much for following. Whoever followed me. Here we go. I am. I'm. I'm there we go. I'm better at it now. Oh, that's the bug. <laughs> you could have a sexy lady behind the blocks. Well, yeah. But like I say, it's 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 not rocket science, right? Um, I've just shown you in two hours how we can create. A game that is almost unplayable <laughs> because I'm rubbish but I want I'm trying to show because I was asked the question yeah and quite rightly so um, you know was I expecting right let me uh, was I expecting people to do this right so produce a game like this. And the answer is no. This is me learning Pi game. Yeah. This is me learning Pi game. So I can answer questions that you guys come across. Oh, I've got to kill them all because the spaceships will be coming soon. Hang on. And I'm rubbish at, <laughs> I'm rubbish at shooting. <laughs> Come on. Here we go. <sighs> Level two. Bring it on. See the noise. Oh no, he blew up straight away. The spaceship did. Oh, there's another one. No! No! no. Oh, he killed me! <laughs> right. But that is me. I've done that to, t to teach me more about Pi Game. So I've written that purely as a learning exercise, right? So I've learned that I am, uh, um, and, and, and that's how I teach myself. Yeah, I know, mate. <laughs> it's good, isn't it? <laughs> you got to ignore the, ignore the text. You just got to get on with it quick. Um, but I, I did that the way I learn is to do it, not, you know, to get on with, have something to aim for, and that's how I do it. So I've done it with asteroids, yeah? I, it was last weekend, I think it was, last weekend when I did it, and I gave myself a target, and I challenged other people to create a game, and 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 the, the other person created a game called Name in a Box, which is quite not asteroids, but he did it. Yeah, I didn't create a game called Name in the Box. But it's allowing me to learn Pi Game. And this is, and yes, mate, it is a classic. And, and this is how I learn. Now, that was asteroids. I did that last week, last weekend, the majority of it. And then throughout the week, I've been improving it i put all the scoring on it done all the text fades and all the effects and stuff like that there's a lot more to do i've just i've just included all the sound effects and leveling so now as you progress you get more asteroids to get faster the ships come more frequently and stuff like that but ultimately it's to be able to do get to this point where where is it where is it where is it here to get to this point yeah where we are writing a game that we're going to convert to 6502 and this game is this if it runs is it running did i press run aha oh and it won't do
do it because I moved I moved the maps, didn't I? I moved the maps. Try it again, John, because I think I moved the maps. Yeah, I've moved the maps. <laughs> But this is Hunchback. Um, I don't know why the maps have moved. Um, let's run it again. I want to see what the error is. I want to see what the error is. Oh, I know what the error is. I know what the error is. Stop, stop, stop. Because I've set the level to be naught. It's level one. That's the first level. Here we go. So this is my version of Hunchback. Yeah, so we've got a character. We've got this fella, the ninja, who is doing the equivalent of the soldier. We have a platform that we are can jump across. Yeah, so the ninja will be starting to fly towards us now, look. Now this level has no bad guys or nothing on it. And we are here to get the coins. Then we go into level two, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So this one now has um, asteroids, boulders coming at us. Here we go. There's one, there's two. So it's a classic hunchback, but this is my version. Yeah. And this is just for demonstration purposes. But that's what we're going to get to. <laughs> Sand. It, it's, well, if it is, it's a, it's a lady. It's a lady. Because it's a girl night, not a boy night. So, the that's what we're going to try and get to. Yeah, Asteroid is me. Asteroid is me learning Pi game more. And... And if you want to learn Pi Game, you've got to give yourself something to go for. You can't just learn Pi Game by just going, oh, I'm, I'm going to try to learn. You've got to have, say, I want to do this. How am I going to do this in Pi Game? How am I going to? So I did Asteroids. I love the game. I did. <laughs> I did Asteroids. And... Um, and so um, that was my learn because I wanted to learn about how to do the angles, how to do the vector graphics, all the line. So in, in asteroids, there is no sprites. None of those things are sprites. They are all uh, draw graphics, line graphics drawn directly onto the screen. Yeah. But I don't want you guys to have to worry about that. I want you to use the the full functionality of Pi Game. So we're using sprites, uh, the collision detection that sprites offer, and all the rest of the stuff. So how many of you in the, in in chat right now are going to go for the homework and create a Pi Game just using blocks? Come on, let me know. Who's going to do it? Good man. Oh, I know you said yes, mate. I know you said yes. Can't see 64 mark. Are you doing it? Yeah, we need a list of people doing it. Now there's... There's no time limit, right? If if we're going to put a time limit, let's say three, four weeks, something like that, over the lifespan of the Pi Game Hunchback video series, yeah? Because as the videos come out, you'll learn more things to do, yeah? But I want you to 
create yourself again. <laughs> Duke Nukem, yeah, yeah. Create yourself again. Uh, people of, I mean, the Space Invaders. I know no one's doing Space Invaders, so the Space Invaders, which could be a block game. Frogger. Frogger could be a block-based game. You know, you've got the blocks going left and right, like I did with the pet. Like I did the Frogger for the pet, yeah? Um... <laughs> yeah, I mean that's what the that's what the videos are for. Um what else can, what else could be a block race game? Yeah, lemmings. Say again. What say again then? Yeah, that's what I've just done. Yeah, I've just done that. You was watching me stream? Oh, you was watching other people's stream, but not mine? Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> Pong, yes. Pong. Um, lemmings, yeah. Because you could just have blocks. Um, what else? <laughs> Crack out. <laughs> um, what else is there? Snake. That's a block-based game. Um, a simple one. What else? Um, uh, God dear, struggling. But yeah, burger time. But you could have coloured blocks. You just have coloured blocks for the different, the different layers in the burger. So the, the, there are many, there are, as you can see, there are, just by using a little bit of imagination yeah i like i like that game as well just by using a little bit of imagination you can create a block based game out of blocks and not have to worry about it so basically what it's doing it's teaching you how to use pi game and how to create the mechanics no because pac-man could could be done because you would have it all the ghosts in different colours. Pac-Man would be yellow. So you could have red, blue, pink and green as the other ghosts. And then when you've eaten the pellet, they all turn to blue. It's still a block-based game. It, you're just not having any graphics. Chess. Hmm. Chess may be a little, maybe a little bit too advanced. <laughs> um, how would you know? Minor 49er? Yeah, that's block and platform. Yeah, minor 40, what, minor 2, 4, 20 49er, isn't it? Yeah, Frank and Doc. Yeah, yeah, 20 49 Boulder Dash, yeah. Oh, I used to like that. Yeah, Boulder Dash, Connect 4. Yeah, Connect 4 would be a block based game, yeah. So, are you guys up for it? Because I'm, 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 I'm expecting, I want people to let me know they're going to do it and what they're going to attempt, yeah? That's what I want to know. I'm still learning Pi Game, so I will try and help as many people out as I can um, to do it. But we're now talking homework here, boys and girls. This is where you show me that I'm doing a good job in teaching you. <laughs> Cause this will this will get this will get fun. I'm I, cause I reckon we will have plenty of people doing clever things in Pi Game that will that hopefully will be able to transfer into Commodore 64 and 6502. So who who out of the viewers is doing? I know Mandy's gonna do it. OMG Buster's gonna do it. Um, Doc's just gonna try it. I think. Anybody else? Mark, you doing Connect Four? We need one for Grey Defender. Well done, Phase. You go for it. Let. 
I know, mate. I know. I know. But there's no time limit. I'm learning Z80. No time. Right. That. That's fine, mate. That's fine. That's not a problem. This is all just to have a bit of fun. Yeah? So, I will learn... Because the other half's going... She's off to bed now. So I will say... I've done what I wanted to do, which was to show you that you could write a very simple block-based game. Um, and I did it in two hours. Yesterday it was four, I think it was, when I finally did it. Um, let's go back to it. So, um, where are we? Close folder. Acnoid. Here we go. So, as you can see, if you ignore that file, so we'll get rid of it because it's not part of this. We have got a settings file where all the settings are. So, in the Pi game template, this lot is already done. Yeah? Oh. So that will turn that will be in that should be in the main screen so when the main screen starts so oh oh i've got a big bat now so i'll be able to catch it in time aren't I? i've got a big fat bat now there we go it says aconoid in the in the title God, i'm concentrating on keeping this ball on the screen yeah so there's not many files, so we've got the player file, which is dedicated just to looking after the player. We have the ball file, which is just dedicated for looking after the ball. And the block is just the block. And then we have the game, which work, does all the mechanics. So that is the game thing. So I will say thank you very much for joining. My, dis oh, my Discord's gone a bit bonkers. Um... Please have a go. Please have a go. Because this this community project won't be much of a community project if I don't get people joining in and having a bit of fun. And so I will... I don't know if anybody... Is anybody else got running at the moment? Hello, John here. Thank you for following. Hope you enjoy the stream. Whoever that was, thank you very much for following. Unfortunately, I only hear it. I don't see it. So I will say, um, do you want me to put this in GitHub so you can use it as a um, an example? I don't want to see this being sent back to me as your homework. <laughs> okay mate okay doctor <laughs> the, there's no time limit I, I think if if we give say a month that'll give everybody plenty of time to 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 do it we're not gonna i'm not saying i want you to have this done in a week's time it's not it's not gonna happen you guys are new to this well most of you are new to this um and we all have lives all right, so let me know what you're trying. So I've got a list of people and I know what's happening. Do you want me to put this on GitHub? I'll, if, I, if you do, I'll put some comments in. No. <laughs> Well, I'll put some comments in it anyway, to try, so it'll to make sure that when I do put it on GitHub, there's a load of comments in there. But try and um, 
Um, have a go. I will. Um, I will. Yeah, I'll put it on GitHub. Give me a couple of days to put all the comments in and and try and put enough explanation in on what's happening. But have a go. Please have a go. It's a bit of fun. And um, let's see what you guys produce. Remember, block based. You do not get points for fancy graphics. It's all about playability. Yeah, Minecraft is block based as well. But if you want to try doing that in Pi game, um, go for it. <laughs> what would we call it? What would we call it? Piecraft. There we go. Piecraft. But that could be. People could take that as making pies. Hmm. Maybe not. All right. Yeah, 2D version. Yes, there's nothing wrong with that. I was just trying to think of other games that could be um, block based. Uh, let's see. Just racking my brain now. Um, Spy Hunter. Tetris, yeah, that's the obvious one. Um, a scroll, racing, uh, scrolling one, Spy Hunter, um, Slalom, um, which is what uh, Mark's doing in his blogs. Um, what else? Um, I was trying to think of a spacey type game. <laughs> Hardware limitations. <laughs> elite. I don't think Elite he could be done as a block based game. <laughs> oh dear. But yeah, I mean, you got Frogger, um, Space Invaders, that could be block based. Snake, um, Breakout, uh, Minor 2049er. I suppose Donkey Kong could be a block based game because all it is is just jumping over barrels, isn't it? So you'd be jumping over blocks as it works its way down the screen. Um, oh. Amok? What do you mean? Is that a game? I thought that was the person. Berserk, yes. Yes. Yes, that could be one. So I will I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys are gonna do. Alright, oh, I see. I see. So when you've decided what you're gonna do, let me know in Discord. Yeah. So I've got a list of people trying whatever the game type they're trying and we'll have an update three or four weeks time and see what people have produced and stuff like that i'll get this commented up and put on git if you're going to do breakout don't copy mine that's the only rule you can use it as an example but i don't want to see any of my code in there because that's just cheating and cheaters will be punished all right Discord link, Discord link. Um, I think if you type in Discord, does that do it? Oh, it's not. Is it not working again? Let's have a look. No. Okay. Let me just get you a link for you. Du, 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 du. Right. 
Right, here we go. There you go. That's my Discord. So let me know in Discord what game you're going to try and go for. Um, and then that'll give me it. That will that will um, let me know how many people are going to have a go at it. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, like I say, if you're going to do breakout, try doing your own version. Don't copy mine. Um, but if you want to play, um, if you want to create another game that out of blocks, then all, by all means do it. But don't make it too complicated. You, you're talking simple games here. Simple, simple games. Um, oh, okay. Um, um, let me know and um, we'll take it from there, yeah? So this is, this is, the, the, the start of the Pi Game uh, community development project where at the end of it we will have a Commodore 64 par, uh, Hunchback clone that hopefully will sell and make some money for charity at the end of it. All right. Well, I'm going to... Oh, Christ. Nearly, nearly three hours. So I will, uh, I will sign off now and say I will talk to you guys in Discord. All right. Well, take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye. I'd like to thank all the Patreons that are contributing to my channel. Without you guys, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing right now. Thank you very much.